wondering how to create a Facebook event on a business page. In this tutorial, I'll walk you through step-by-step -step how to do it, as well as some best practices to consider to make sure your event gets seen by as many people as possible. All right, let's get into it. Hey, welcome to 5-Minute Social Media, where we help overwhelmed business owners streamline their social media strategy so they can generate more revenue with less work. If that sounds like something you'd like in your business, take a second, hit subscribe, click that bell. That way you'll be notified each week when we release another helpful video. And if you'd like to create your own customized social media plan, a streamlined one, then stay till the end because I've got a masterclass I'd love to invite you to. And if you watch to the end of this video, I'll show you how you can access it completely for free. All right. My name is Jerry Potter, and yes, it rhymes with a boy wizard. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a Facebook event on a Facebook business page. So start on your Facebook business page. And there's a couple ways you can do this. You can either go to the menu here and click more. You might need to click more if it doesn't show at the top and click events. Or you can just click events over here in this menu on the side. I know it looks differently for everybody, so I just like to give you a couple of options. On either screen, you should see something that says create new event. So I'm going to click that. The next question you'll answer is, is this going to be an online event or an in-person event? And so choose the one that is most appropriate for you. I'm going to choose online event because this is mostly what I do so I can reach people around the world. And then there's a couple of options here. One is general, which is what most of us will use. So if you were to do an ongoing class, there's some additional elements that you can add, like the requirements and prerequisites and things like that. So I'm going to go ahead and hit general here. And then you can decide if you want to do free or paid. Now, if you want to learn more about paid Facebook events, I've got a video all about that that may appear on your screen right now on the upper right. Or if it doesn't appear on your device, you can find that link in the description of this video. So I'm going to go ahead and click free for this event. And then you want to give your event a name. And when you're doing this, you want to make sure that the first few words are the most important. So for example, let's say that your event has a really long name. And so the event says the 35th annual Royal Society of People presents and you know, blah, 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 blah. Well, on a lot of devices, all anyone's going to see is the 35th annual. And that does not exactly grab people's attention in general, right? So that's why you want to make sure whatever the most important parts are up front. So let's say you are having the 35th annual or whatever. Then put what the event is, and then you can put 35th annual afterward in parentheses. Now, I host a big event every year called Content Camp, where I show hundreds of business owners how to create 40 to 50 powerful content ideas to help them drive sales in their businesses. And so I'm going to just call this Content Camp. We'll call it Content Camp 2023. Why not? And uh, that's what I'm going to use just for this tutorial. But obviously, you put your event name in there and just make sure the first few words are the most important ones there at the beginning. Next, choose your dates. Now, if your event is just on one day, then you'd have both dates would be the same. And if it's multiple days, then you can have a separate start and end date. Choose the start time. If your computer is working the way it's supposed to, uh, it will use your local time when you are setting this up. However, I've seen it malfunction, so you may want to check, see if you can have somebody from another time zone double check your event after it goes up potentially. But in general, it should be your local time there. Now, if you add a location in this location box, underneath it says the location you enter will set the time zone. So that would, for example, um, may change the time that you put in. Um, and of course, if you have a physical location, then that's great to put in there. Otherwise, though, you can leave that blank. Next up, you're going to put the description. So just like when we did the title, you're going to want to make sure that the description is specifically giving the most important information in the first few words or the first line or two, because that's what most people will see. They're not going to see your whole description. So for example, you wouldn't want to start off by saying, join us for this fun-filled event again this year. That means nothing, right? So if you were to, let's say you were hosting a big festival or something like that, then you would want to say, join us for rides, bands, music, uh, food, and more, or something like that. So for content camp, I might say, not getting sales from social media, learn how to generate 40 to 50 powerful content ideas for your business. That way, I'm putting the most important information out front. Then below that, I could add other little details or social proof or different things like that. Just under there, you're going to choose a category. And the categories don't always fit very well. And unfortunately, there's not an other category. Categories are important, though. If, if you have a category that it does fit, then definitely choose it because that may help your 
event get recommended to people for free by Facebook. So I'm just gonna choose professional networking. Uh, then I'm gonna hit next down here at the bottom. Now, how are people gonna join your online event? So if you want to do a Facebook Live, you can click that. If you want to send them to an external link, so maybe it's on your website, maybe it's a Zoom link, then you can click that. Or you can click other, and that means you just type in whatever you want inside of your description so that people know where to go for your event. And by the way, if you wanna do a Facebook Live in your event, I do have a separate tutorial about that. And I've got it linked on the screen right now, or if you don't see it in your device, you can go and uh, find the description of this video and you'll see the link in there. All right, almost done. Next, I want to suggest that you choose a cover photo for your event. Now, by default, it's just going to take the cover photo from your business page, but I strongly recommend you replace it with something else. I strongly suggest you replace it with something else that's gonna grab people's attention. I just like to use photographs in general. Um, once it's up there, you can reposition it so that it fits in the picture in the best way. I suggest that you use a photo of people at an event if you have it, because that's kind of nice social proof that's built in. You can do an image with some text on it, but if it's too much text, it just gets really, really busy. So here's one that I use sometimes if I am doing a What's Working Now update in my 5-Minute Social Academy program. So you see there's some text on there, grabs people's attention, but it's not like a crowded flyer. Now, when your image first goes up, it might look a little pixelated or blurry, like not as clear as you'd like. They're going to get you a preview uploaded right away, but sometimes after Facebook has more time to process the image, then it will look better. So don't panic if it doesn't look right right away. Now, if it still looks terrible half hour, hour later, then you probably need to consult a graphic designer uh, and sort out why it's coming out that way. So underneath, you can enable country restrictions by toggling this on if you wanna make your event only available to certain countries. If we click event settings here underneath, there's a couple of other things we can add. Uh, you can decide whether to show the guest list or hide the guest list. I recommend showing it because if somebody is a Facebook friend and they're going to your event, they'll see that their Facebook friend is going to the event and there's some nice social proof there. Uh, there. Basically every event has its own feed. And so this toggle is about whether or not you want other people to be able to post in the event or if you only want admins to be able to post in an event. You can have that uh, turned off and that way you can turn this one on and say that all posts must be approved. So if you want to let people post, but you wanna have some control over it, you can turn that on. And then you can add a messenger button to your event by toggling that on, then people can send you a message about the event. So I'm gonna hit save. And then when you're ready, you can hit publish event. And just like that, your event is live. Now here you can click invite and start inviting people to your event. However, you will only be able to invite people who you are personally Facebook friends with. So even though this is on your business page, you can't just go inviting anyone you know. Essentially, Facebook is not gonna let business pages do that because they feel like that would be us spamming people. But you can invite people that you are friends with with your personal profile on Facebook to the event. And I strongly recommend doing that to get some people interested, build some momentum, and get some energy and engagement behind your event. If you want to find your event later from your Facebook business page again, up here you can go to events. And there it is. Content Camp 2023 is now there on my Facebook business page. Hey, one more important thing too. Having a Facebook business page is great. But if you want to make sure that the people who go to your Facebook business page become buyers or hire you for your services, then you're going to want to make sure it's set up to convert those people. And that's exactly what I have taught lots of people in my Profitable Pages and Profiles workshop. Hundreds of business owners, maybe thousands at this point, have implemented what I teach in this workshop into their businesses, and a lot of them see results within a day or two. Like Portia, who stayed up one night making sure her Facebook personal profile was set up the right way and got a new lead and client the next morning. Or Jen, who used the workshop to make over her pages and profiles and got two inquiries within 18 hours that led to over $1,000 worth of new business. But the record's gotta be Tom, who set up his Facebook business page using what we teach in the workshop, hit publish, and 30 minutes later, a woman called his business to book him, and he said, where'd you hear about me? And she goes, oh, I searched on Facebook, and your page came right up. This is a way to increase sales without more posting. Worse yet, if you haven't set up your pages and profiles the right way, you could already be missing out on potential sales right now. Inside, I'm gonna show you the four essential items every page and profile needs so that visitors become buyers.
And the best part, go through this process once and it will serve you for years. Now, normally it's $47, but right now, if you go to profitablepage.com slash YouTube, this is a special link for people on YouTube, you can get this entire workshop for only $17. Again, that's profitablepage.com slash YouTube. And of course, you can also find that in the description of this video. And you know what? I'm gonna throw in a couple of bonuses as well. If you're not sure that you are on the best social network or networks for your business, I have a five-part framework that I use with people to help make sure that you're in the right place. Like, where's your content gonna perform the best? It goes so much further than just where is my audience? You need to make sure you can reach them, you can engage with them, all of those things. And I'm gonna throw that in as a bonus, as well as if you have social networks you're not posting on, as much anymore. I have a special training called How to Revive Your Abandoned Networks so that it doesn't look like you went out of business on Twitter eight years ago. You get both of those now. Again, go to profitablepage.com slash YouTube to get that special price just for YouTube viewers right now. Thank you for watching today. You're not only supporting me, but also my two tiny superheroes at home.